a 150 watt LED floodlight from eBay for $40. Let's check it out. So yeah, I bought for $39.19 with free shipping on eBay this giant 150 watt LED floodlight. Now, I live in an apartment. I'm not using it outside. What I need it is a better way to illuminate this room when I do videos. The windows are open right now and it's an overcast day. But even if it's sunny, I don't get that much light and my videos come out a little grainy. So I need a cheap way and also an energy efficient way to light up this room a little bit better so I get a slightly better quality video. So I saw this on there for 40 bucks. So I'm like, screw it, let's give it a shot. So comes with the unit itself. It has a heck of a heat sink on the back. Whether it's actually connected to anything inside or not, we'll find out in a few minutes. Uh, came in a nice box off this side and just one page of just basic general, hey, make sure it's installed by someone who knows what they're doing. Here, make two holes for the stand right here in the side of the wall. And um, don't cross the wires. Don't cross the streams. Thank you, Egon. So, yeah, it has, this one's rated for 110 watts. And it's just got live, neutral, and ground. So, before we even try putting any power to it, I want to open it up and check it out. Because chances are I don't want to use their wire. I want to cut another AC wire, which I have down the side here, and feed it into there. So this way I can just use it inside. They basically have it set right now to go to a junction box on the outside of a house. So we got to modify it a little bit. And thankfully, this thing is rated for IP65. So it should be good for water and dust, rain, stuff like that. And it's even got an insulated grommet. So that's another reason why I get in there. i got to make sure my cord will fit in. So let's open it up and see what we got. Okay, so we got a bunch of Phillips heads running around here. So let me pull them off real quick and see what we got. And the case is definitely aluminum or metal. It's not plastic, so it's not that chintzy. I'm surprised considering it only costs $40. Okay. Whew. Okay. That was all the glass. That is definitely strong glass <laughs> and thick. Let's see here. It's got a nice silicon seal around it. And the glass itself, yeah, this is real glass. It's not polycarbonate. So there you go. It's what, quarter inch thick glass? Notched around the sides for where the uh, screw holes go. Now there's no seal between the outside of the glass and the frame, but there is a seal that runs around from the inside of the glass to the inside of the frame, pressing right here, and I can already tell that screw's loose. Yeah, thank you, China. Okay, let me get this out of the way, and we'll actually get into the unit itself. And this has a bunch of Phillips heads as well. Yeah, here's another screw that's loose. Kind of chintzy on the screws too. There's only four screws when they could have put four more around the other side here, but hey, whatever. It's only holding a reflector. I think this reflector is really thin. Okay, yeah, you can bend the reflector really easy, so you gotta be careful with that. Let's put that off this side. Now it was also held in by this little rubber grommet. Pull this on up, get out of the way. I think that was actually supposed to come up with it, but it kind of got glued down here once. There we go. Okay, let me put that to the side as well. Now, looking inside here and kicking off a bunch of screws. Hold on. Where'd my screws go? 
Okay. Now, looking inside here, I do have to say there's this gel encapsulation they did with it. So, that's pretty cool. As long as it can handle the temperature and... Oh, yeah, definitely. Hold on, let me get a paper towel. <laughs> See if I can get in closer here. We can actually look at the board itself. And refocus. There we go. Okay, so here's the board on the inside. I can already tell because I already smudged right up top here. This is a um, thermal compound on the circuit board, which is one of those aluminum core boards. So they actually heat synced it to the metal frame itself, and it's a solid aluminum or aluminium. So it's definitely heat sick and it works really well. Your AC lines come in through the bottom here. Come on up. You got a common ground. And then you have your um, hot. Wow. Check that out. That was freaking wonderful. It's not even soldered on there very well. It broke right off. I could have turned this thing on. It could have arced for a few seconds and then pfft, either it just died or end up catching fire. So. Stuff from China can be good, but you need to keep an eye on it. So I'm going to resolder that. Goes through a fuse. Goes through, um, uh, it's not a TVS diode. Um, it's one of those poly fuses. So it's also got a poly fuse. And I'm not sure what these two chips are because they're massively covered in that gunk. And same with this. I assume these are all LED drivers. And it breaks down the voltage somehow. But they also got the board completely white. So I can't even really see where the traces go to try to reverse engineer this. It looks like all the capacitor spots are unpopulated except for two up here. They didn't populate this top one for some reason. Or down here on this corner. Maybe the board is also expandable. That was fun. So my intention is to take off this wire and unsolder and thankfully resolder a cheap $10 25 foot extension card that I got from... Walmart. So let me go ahead and chop off the negative side of this, get rid of the wire, refeed them through, and solder these back on here. Then we'll continue on from there. Okay, so I had to separate the circuit board from the main housing just so I could solder my two wires on it. It was sucking up so much heat I couldn't even melt the solder when it was still attached. And I also made another discovery on this. Hopefully this thing doesn't kill me when I finally plug it in. Let me get it off my little clippers right there. Now, on the back of this board, yes, it's covered in thermal grease. Sort of. It looks like they took two wipes with some sort of... Um... Crap, I'm having a brain fart here. Yeah, one of those tools. And um, when they press the board down, they didn't press it down very good. You can see how goopy it is. I'm going to smooth it on out some, try to make a better coating, and then I'm going to remount it now, now that i got two wires on it. So let me remount it, and then we'll see if I see sparks or catch the house on fire or what. See if the circuit board even works. Okay, let's see here. i got everything reassembled, put back in there, all connected, and should be safe. So i got my kilowatt hour meter here. We're going to plug it in and see if we blow a breaker or sparks fly or it just gets really freaking bright in here. Here we go. Ooh, that's freaking bright. <laughs> well, it's definitely working. Woo. There's actually heat coming off of these LEDs. Wow. Okay, let's see without blinding myself how many... They're ready for 150 watts. I'm trying to make sure I don't touch the hot wire inside there, too. Um, wow, that is, like, beyond freaking bright. <laughs> 113 watts. That's still not bad at all. <laughs> so it's definitely working. Let's let it run for a few minutes to see if I can feel the heat on the back heat sink. Woohoo! That is freaking nuts! Okay, I turned the automatic brightness control off on my camera, so this way it'll actually adjust for it, but... Yeah, this thing's extremely bright. Wow. <laughs> but it's so bright you can't even get the individual. There you go. Now you can see it a little bit. 
But yeah, they are, every single one is lit. And I'm starting to get heat on the back here. So it's definitely conducting the heat away properly. Let's put it all back together and then actually try it in a normal camera setting. Because honestly, I don't think my eyes can handle much more of this. There we go. Okay, it works. Okay, I got it fully assembled now. I have it sitting over on the baby changing table right now. And it's angled to the ceiling, so this way I get this bouncing light effect. So. Now I also have the exposure on my camera locked, so it's not going to change and try to compensate no matter what. Now, just for comparison, before I plug it in and show what it does in a bounce light with the exposure locked, a regular incandescent bulb, 60 watts, puts out roughly 800 lumens of light. This unit, that 150 watt light, that apparently only pulls 110 watts, so, oh well, is rated for 9,500 lumens. It's that freaking bright, as you saw earlier. So let me go ahead and plug it in now. This is exposure locked. Ha ha! Talking about bright! So let's try this test again with the exposure uh, unlocked. But now I have the exposure unlocked on here. We should see a difference in quality of video. Uh, I'm sure I'm probably a little grainy right now, but once I plug that in, it's going to take a second for the camera exposure to readjust. I should be really clear after that. I probably have to find a different angle to put it at because it's casting a shadow from where the camera's sitting. But I'll bet you 10 to 1, I probably look a lot better. Let me try a different position for it. So now I'm sure, even with the exposure automatically adjusting itself now, I have it off to the side. And let me see here. I got it sitting on top, actually, of my pick manual pick and place machine. It's sitting on top here, bouncing on the wall and back over to me. So it should actually be fairly clear now. I shouldn't be that grainy, and that was the whole intention of this. If you actually wanted to know how good it was being just an outdoor floodlight at night, here you go. <laughs> that's freaking bright. So that's my review of the eBay $40 150 watt LED floodlight with a minor modification so this way I can use it indoors on a regular wall outlet. Now as for the exterior construction, I would say yes it probably is IP65 rated. The only two places for water to really get in is the sealed grommet where the wire comes out and that nice big giant weather seal that was on this piece of quarter inch glass on the front of it. So, it probably will stand up to IP65 rating. The circuit board itself was potted as well, or uh, conformally coated with something on it. So, even if a little bit of water did get in there, it should be okay. At the same time, the construction of the circuit board itself, on its own, was actually really good as well. The big problem with this is when it came time for whoever it was to assemble it. Number one... The thermal grease on the back of it was only covering half of the unit, so it couldn't even wick all the heat away. It was just done really fast and haphazardly. Some of the screws were loose in this thing, whether it be for the exterior hold, it, hold together for the IP65 rating, or even the uh, screws for the circuit board itself. And then you saw, as I started showing the uh, AC wires coming into the circuit board, the one just broke right off. Chances are they probably tried soldering those wires on after they mounted it onto the back of the heat sink. I can't do that. I'm sure they probably can't do that either. You need an incredible amount of heat on an aluminum core circuit board. So I had, as you saw, I had to remove the circuit board and hang it on top just so I can get enough heat into those connections to make a good solder connection for those wires. So. For the average person who just wants a floodlight and put it out in their house, don't buy it. If you like tinkering and you don't mind buying something that's China made and is cheap and willing to take the time to pull it apart before you ever put power into it and make sure it was assembled correctly, go for it. I saved a ton of money by doing this. So, If you have any questions or comments, 
Go ahead and leave them down below. Thanks.